let's stop beating around the bush here. The bottom line is, you want to sound more confident in English, right? Well, in that case, I must insist you pay close attention to this lesson. Take notes, and I would appreciate it if you took the time to complete the task I'll be setting you. To help you practice these 38 smart expressions and idioms, to help you sound more confident, assertive, and well, like a boss. To be an assertive communicator means that you are able to express yourself concisely and clearly. That you're not too aggressive, but you're able to express your thoughts, feelings and opinions clearly, with confidence. Avoiding confrontation, but still gaining the respect of people who are listening to you. Now before we start the lesson, I'm going to share some opinions with you. These are not necessarily my personal opinions, but what I want you to do is disagree with one of them. I'm sure there's one that you will find you disagree with here. I want you to use some of these expressions or even idioms to help assert yourself, to be confident in expressing your opinion on one or all of these opinions that I'm going to share. So, everyone should become a vegetarian in order to reduce greenhouse gases and combat climate change. Combat meaning fight climate change. A degree is essential if you want to be successful in life. Cats make better pets than dogs. And finally, the only way to learn English is to spend a lot of money and study in the UK. Well, on this point, I'd have to respectfully disagree. Intensive learning, commitment and a great teacher are really what you need, whether face-to-face -face in the UK or online with a trusted language school. I want to tell you about an incredible opportunity with our long-term and trusted partners, Lingoda. Yes, that's right, the Lingoda Language Sprint and Super Sprint are back, offering you the chance to study for three months intensively with a professional native language teacher. Now, remember that Lingoda offers English courses, business English courses, Spanish, French and German. So whatever your language learning goals are, Lingoda are going to help you achieve them. With that all important bonus of potentially qualifying for 100% of your tuition fees back. Yes, you heard me right. You are going to have the opportunity to get 100% of your money refunded back to you for your tuition fees at the end of the course. So keep watching if you want to learn more about how you can qualify for this and take full advantage of the amazing opportunity they are giving you. Now, as I said before, we have worked with the Lingoda for over three years. We've met the Lingoda team, we've tried out their courses, Sabra and I both had a little go at Spanish, and we love the language platform they offer with professional teachers to help guide you through your study and give you virtual face-to-face -face classes. Great teaching and study materials, effective methodologies, and professional native teachers are what set Lingoda apart from so many other online language schools. They really are one of the best out there. And yes, you heard me right. You have the opportunity to gain 100% of your money back. It is not too good to be true. Many people have already achieved this. All you need to do is attend all your classes on the Super Sprint, or if you take the regular Sprint, then you can qualify for 50% of your tuition fees back if, again, you attend all those classes. You also have free access to the Cambridge online speaking test when you sign up for a course with Lingoda, which for me really is the cherry on top. There have been more than 40,000 previous Lingoda language sprint students. Click on the link in the description box to learn more about them. In fact, quite a few were our Love English students here. So do comment below and let us know how you got on. Get in touch and tell us more about your Lingoda experience. Now the sprint starts on the 28th of April, 2021, that's this year, and you have to sign up before the 16th of April. Remember, the Lingoda language sprint is really popular, so don't leave it to the last minute. I do recommend signing up at least a few weeks before, if not sooner. And as I've mentioned, there are two sprint options. The super sprint, where you attend 30 classes per month for three months and get that 100% cash back if you attend all those agreed classes. 
You've got the regular sprint where, for some of you, you may have more commitments, it may be more difficult to fit into your schedule if you've got kids, you're working. At 15 lessons per month for three months is a nice compromise and you still have the opportunity to get 50% of your tuition fees back at the end of the course if you attend all those classes. So for a €49 Euro deposit, you can sign up now. Secure your place on the Lingoda Language Sprint or Super Sprint. But if you'd like to save a little bit more money on that deposit, then you can click the link in the description box or the comments section and use our code just for you, CHANGE63. CHANGE63. Saving you 10 euros or $12, depending on which currency you're paying in, and securing your place on the Lingoda Language Sprint. Practice some of these 38 expressions and idioms and really boost your language level. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Lingoda and hear from a few of their previous students, then don't forget you can also follow them on Instagram. And again, click that link in the description box where you can read more testimonials and learn more about the Lingoda Language Sprint and other courses that they offer. Right, ready to sound more confident, assertive, disagree with people and share your opinion? Let's have a look at these 38 smart expressions and idioms in English. Right, now two of the expressions I'm going to share are actually very, very simple, but are incredibly effective when used in combination with the rest of these expressions. Excuse me and I'm afraid. Excuse me and I'm afraid. I stress the importance of these expressions because essentially they are softening your language, they are preparing people for something that you are going to say, and they essentially sound much more polite in English. Excuse me is more formal than saying, I'm sorry. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid is a great way to set someone up when you're going to disappoint them, perhaps say something that they might feel not particularly happy about, or indeed just say no. I'm afraid I can't. I'm afraid I'm not able to. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there. So these expressions are essential when it comes to formal or assertive language, whether really in a business environment or just in day-to-day -day English. So two simple expressions I want you to bear in mind and consider using in conjunction with the rest of these expressions. Now the first expressions I'm going to share with you are to help you make suggestions, express your preferences, and even make requests, ask someone to do something. Number three, I would appreciate it if, I would appreciate it if you could have the report on my desk by Monday. I would appreciate it if you could help me with this work. I would appreciate it if you didn't speak so loudly, meaning just please stop it. So I would appreciate it if. Quite simply, when you want to learn more about something, I'm interested in, or a nice alternative, I'm curious about. I'm interested in learning more about our competitors. I'm curious about how the competitors are strategizing their marketing. So to express that you want to learn more about this to perhaps an employee, or just in general to show your interest, is going to help you sound a little bit more assertive and show that you are in control. You know what you want and what you want to learn. So I'm interested in, or I'm curious about. I'm curious about the Lingoda language sprint. I'd like to learn more. Quite simply, I'd like, I'd like to. Please do not use I want. In any situation, it can often sound a little bit too aggressive, uh, even rude. I want to know more about. I'd like to. It doesn't weaken the language, it just makes you sound a little bit more formal and polite. Remember, it is important to sound assertive and not aggressive to gain the respect of your fellow employees, your boss, or anyone, in fact. This doesn't have to be in a work environment. I'd like. I'd like the opportunity to present this to the board. I'd like to ask for a little bit more help with this. Number seven might surprise you, but I feel. I feel. Don't be scared to express how you feel about something. Now, I'm not asking you to express, oh, I feel a bit sad today. Simply saying, I feel this could be the wrong decision. I feel that we are making a mistake. I feel that we need to take a little bit more time on this and think things through clearly. Just like I believe, I feel is expressing your personal opinion, showing that it's important and you're not scared to share it. 
Simple but effective. Number eight, I would prefer or I would prefer not to. I would prefer or I would prefer not to. I would prefer that we work in a team. I prefer not to work with Bob from accounts. He tends not to really pull his weight, meaning do his fair share of work. I'd prefer, again, saying instead of I want or as an alternative to I would like, I would prefer. You're making your feelings clear, but you are still not being too aggressive. Would you please? Would you please help me with this? Don't be scared to ask someone for something. Would you please? Would you please make sure that you tidy the copy room after you've used it? Would you please make sure to have that report on my desk by 10 tomorrow? Polite, assertive. Would you mind, again, another way to make a request in an indirect way? Would you mind working a little bit later tonight? Pay attention, would you mind working? Would you mind doing? Would you mind helping? You need the gerund, the noun form of the verb there with that sentence. Number 11, a little bit more formal. Instead of saying you should, you ought to. You ought to. You could add you really ought to. You really ought to speak with the boss about having next Friday off if you really need it. And again, it's always important to show that you are grateful, that you appreciate the work they do. So I'd be grateful if, like I'd appreciate it if, shows that you are respecting the person's work, their ability to do something. I'd be grateful if you could get the report on my desk by 10 tomorrow. Showing that you appreciate their work, but still not being shy to tell them when and how to do things is essential to be assertive. And of course, if you are the boss. Number 13, a little bit stronger. I must insist. I must insist. Okay, this is saying, look, this is really how we need to do things. I must insist we cannot delay things any longer. Otherwise, our competitors are going to have the upper hand, meaning the advantage. So I must insist plus the clause shows that you strongly believe this is the right thing to do. Number 14, the only sensible thing to do is, the only sensible thing to do is, here you're clearly expressing that you would prefer to do things this way, that it doesn't really make much sense to do it another way. The only sensible thing to do is bring our prices down. We need to be more competitive. Number 15, we'd be wise to. We'd be wise to. We would be wise to. Wise meaning talking about experience and knowledge combined, that's wisdom. We is a nice pronoun and when you include other people in your opinions, then again, it strengthens it. We'd be wise to offer the staff more flexibility in working from home. They seem to be much more productive when working from home. We'd be wise to. I believe the best policy is to offer staff flexible working hours. When you treat your staff well, they will treat the business well. I believe the best way to move forward is to, I believe the best way to move forward is to, this is when you are essentially moving forward with a decision, with a plan, when perhaps something has gone wrong even. I believe the best way to move forward is to simply invest a little bit more money. I'm sure the project can be achieved just with some more funding. Now, these next expressions are about disagreeing, something that for many people can be quite scary. And certainly I've noticed that my students tend to shy away from disagreeing with me, even though I want them to. Disagreeing is an important part of actually building a good working relationship or any relationship. You can't simply agree with someone when you don't. So let's have a look at some great ways to disagree, sound assertive and be polite. I'm afraid, there's that word, I'm afraid I disagree. Simple, but effective. Not I disagree, not what are you talking about, not you're wrong, but I'm afraid I disagree. I'm afraid I disagree. Studying online is a great way to improve your English. I respectfully disagree. I respectfully disagree. Perhaps using this expression maybe with more senior management, someone that you're working for, rather than who is working for you. I respectfully disagree. I respectfully disagree. I think she deserves to have that promotion. I take your point, but that isn't the way I see it. I take your point, but that isn't the way I see it. Instead, I think that we need to scale back the plans. 
and reassess the budget. True, that's a fair point, but I have to say, I still disagree. Now, here it's also very important where you actually acknowledge someone else's opinion. When you acknowledge what someone has said and you can show that you understand their point of view, then they're more likely to try and understand yours. I once tried to teach this to another student and they didn't really get it. They were like, well, I don't agree. I, I don't see what she's saying to be true. It doesn't matter if you don't agree. Suggesting that you understand, that you take their point or see their point, however, but I have to say I disagree. I have to say I disagree. Very effective and hopefully diplomatic. Similarly, I understand where you're coming from, but I understand where you're coming from, but or however. However is a more formal or fancy, but I understand where you're coming from. However, I think you'll find eating less meat is the best solution when it comes to global warming. Now, number 23, it might be that somebody doesn't know something, so they can't actually make a properly informed decision. You may not be aware of this. However, we did already give Jimmy from Accounts the opportunity to redo the report. You may not be aware of this, but the company has invested a lot of money in your training, so I have to disagree. I don't think you've been treated unfairly. Number 24, this is quite strong, so be careful how you use it and your intonation. I'm sorry, do you mean to say, I'm sorry, do you mean to say you still haven't completed the work? I'm sorry, do you mean to say you think dogs are better than cats as pets? So here you're disagreeing, but you're actually, what you're doing with this phrase is clarifying your understanding and often expressing your surprise at their opinion. I I'm sorry, do you mean to say that we should fire him? I have to respectfully disagree. So a great expression to use when you are maybe shocked, surprised by someone's opinion and you want to clarify it, but you really do know what they're talking about. I'm sorry, do you mean to say you don't watch Love English lessons every day? I have to respectfully disagree with that decision. Now, number 25 and 26, two idioms that are going to help you sound quite strong and sure in your opinion and maintaining your position. To stick to your guns. I'm afraid I have to stick to my guns here. Now, there's nothing about shooting in this expression. It means you're refusing to change your opinion or position or actions. Everyone thought it was a terrible idea, but I stuck to my guns and actually it helped the project succeed. In exactly the same way, we can use stand our ground, or I'm going to stand my ground here, meaning I'm not changing my opinion, I'm not changing my position. They wanted to cut my travel budget, but I stood my ground. It's essential that we travel to help connect with our customers. Now these next expressions and idioms are going to help you sound a little bit more direct and astute, assertive in a meeting. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. In this case, you're bringing the focus onto the main topic at hand, the business you want to conduct or discuss, and you're saying, come on, let's stop. No more small talk. Let's just get down to business. Let's do the work. Let's focus on what we need to discuss. 28, we have a lot to cover or we have a lot to get through. Again, highlighting how much work needs to be done and that you need to get down to business. We have a lot of work to cover Let's get down to business. We need to start and not waste time. Simply, let's, let's get started. Let's get started. I use this, it's simple, but it is really important to use let us. You're including everyone, saying I want to start. It's putting you in the focus rather than saying let's, let us get started. It's putting everybody in the focus. It's putting that responsibility to work on everyone. Let me get straight to the point or I'll get right to the point. Again, it's about avoiding wasting time, small talk, and I'll give you an idiom in a minute, beating around the bush, but showing that you are just ready to dive in, get to work, and discuss what really needs to be done. My point is, my point is, a great way to clarify what you've already said. My point is, we need to invest more in the company if we want the returns. So you're clarifying what you've previously said, and using my, my point is, sometimes bringing that pronoun back to yourself, really stressing that this is your opinion, is a great way to sound more professional and assertive. 
and to ensure people pay attention to your opinion. The bottom line is, the bottom line is, in the same way we're essentially drawing a line under something, saying that this is the most important thing and that we need to focus on this. So the bottom line is, if you can't get the report done, then I will be asking somebody else to do it for me. We're running behind schedule. Let's, let us, everyone, try to stay on track. Train track, on track, stay focused. So again, here you're kind of just bringing everyone back into focus. What are the main targets that you want to achieve? Let's stay on track. We're running behind schedule. Let's try to stay on track. And of course, if you're in a meeting, sometimes people come in late, they're grabbing a coffee. You might want to just draw everyone's attention back into the room and say, come on, we're running late. Come on, we're running late. Let's make a start and the latecomers can catch up. Let's make a start and the latecomers can catch up. So you are taking control with these phrases and expressions. You're bringing the focus back onto the work that needs to be discussed in a meeting. Now finally, some rather strong expressions. So again, be careful how you use them. You would be well advised to. You would be well advised to. You'd be well advised to ensure you get to work on time every day. You'd be well advised to stop going on Facebook when you should be working. So this is, I strongly suggest, this is if you are the boss and you really need to tell someone actually, this is not correct. The way you have been working or behaving is not right. You would be well advised to. I would strongly suggest. Number 36, to give someone the benefit of the doubt. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt here. I understand that you had a lot of different projects on the go, so the fact that you've made this mistake, let's forget it for now. So I believe what you are saying, I understand what you're saying at this point, but just for now, you wouldn't want to do this again, to make this mistake or error again. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I'll believe you this time. Number 37, if someone is trying to make excuses for the work that they have or haven't done and you're not particularly happy with their answer, you could say, rather than I'm not stupid, I don't believe you, you could say, I wasn't born yesterday. I wasn't born yesterday. I do realise that you all went out for a few drinks last night and everyone turned up late this morning. You'd be well advised to keep your drinking sessions to the weekend. I wasn't born yesterday. And finally, number 38, to stop beating around the bush. Now, you don't actually have to beat a bush, which is essentially a small plant, a shrub, not a tree, but those things on the ground. You're not beating around the bush, meaning you're not going around the subject, you're getting directly to it. Let's not beat around the bush. This project was not successful. So a great idiomatic expression to help you bring the focus back on the main issue and not just talk around something. You can even say to someone, come on, stop beating around the bush. So there we have it. Quite a few phrases and expressions to remember, but some that I hope you will find useful and certainly quite a few that you may not have heard before. So remember my four opinions, not necessarily my opinions, but opinions I want you to disagree with. Everyone should become a vegetarian in order to combat climate change and reduce carbon emissions. A degree is essential if you want to be successful in life. Cats make better pets than dogs. And the only way to learn English is to spend a lot of money and study in the UK, right? And there we have it. So try using some of the expressions I've shared to try disagreeing with me there. To try and show your assertiveness and confidence in sharing your opinion. And don't forget, if you'd like to practice these phrases, learn many more and boost your confidence in English, the Lingoda Language Sprint is open until the 16th of April for you to sign up using our special code CHANGE63 and the link in the description box. As always, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you very soon with more Love English lessons.